So you've just seen the work of McKenna Davis. Welcome to the Crit House, everybody. I'm Jeff Larson, and we are here today talking with Granville Carroll and Ellen Friedlander. Um, we're very happy to have you both here, and we're going to look at the work of McKenna Davis. McKenna is a senior at UC Santa Cruz. She is uh, studying uh, biology and art with a focus on photography, and the work that we're going to look at is, uh, is one of her projects. Uh, Granville Carroll is a visual artist, an educator, and an Afrofuturist. He's working with digital technology, uh, poetry, and alternative processes. And uh, this year, Granville was named a New York Foundation for the Arts Fellow. He is now a lecturer at the uh, Arizona State University. Granville, it's, uh, it's great to have you. And also you. back again with us is one of our favorite people, Ellen Friedlander, who is an LA-based artist who uses various techni techniques to, uh, to reveal the human condition. Uh, she, I'm going to mispronounce this, Ellen. She is a, a Kai Pai? Kai Pai Pai? Um, Ki Pai Pai. Key Pai Pai Fellow and a co-director at the Pasadena Photography Arts. Uh, her work has been exhibited around the world and she has also been featured on uh, uh, places like Lens Scratch, The Hand Magazine, and uh, one of my favorite places, the Candid Frame Podcast. So McKenna, it's great to have you with us. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your work and uh, what we're going to be talking about today? Yeah. Um... As mentioned before, I'm a senior at UC Santa Cruz studying biology and art. Um, I started off with just biology, but then I started taking art classes and found that way more interesting than biochemistry. So that's what I've been doing. Um, this project is a final project for one of my classes um, titled, Why Can't You Hear Me? And um, I, Initially, it started as a means to convey kind of my internal conflict. But then as I started photographing my friends, it took on a larger meaning um, where I found that we were all pretty angry at the state of the world and what we had experienced in the recent past and just kind of how intangible it felt that we could make a change. It felt like we were powerless. Um, and I chose people screaming because I think it's kind of cathartic to scream. And then also very literally a way to convey that you need help or draw attention to yourself. Um, yeah, so that's my project. And this, this image that's up right now, is this the... The, the compilation, is this the final piece with, with the other images that make it up? Yeah, this is. Okay, all right. So um, before we get into talking about it, Granville, let me just ask you real quickly, as, a, as an academic, um, mm -hmm. is, there, is there any variance for how you give critique to somebody like McKenna, who's working on a specific project, versus a lot of the other people who have been on the Crit House who are not coming from an academic environment? Yes, I would say there is a difference. Um, you know, in an academic environment, we are looking at photo theory um, mostly, right? Um, thinking about the concepts that students are coming up with, uh, whether it's related to something that's socially um, important or if it's an economic situ uh, situation, uh, uh, political, personal. So we're really looking at um, the conceptual perspective of critique. Uh, whereas I believe with other folks who don't go through the academic route, um, oftentimes it's more so about the technical aspects of the photo, uh, the aesthetics of it. Um, and not to say that one is better than the other, right. uh, but there is a shift between um, the importance of the idea behind the photograph and the why uh, in the academic setting versus uh, something outside of that. Okay. From my That's experience. That's helpful. That's good to know. I, I, um, I'm always trying to sort of understand this, this process. Of, so uh, now you're looking at, um, at McKenna's work. Um, you see a whole bunch of individual images and then the, the final version, which you see here. What's your, what's your initial thought? What, what, how, how do you guide her? What do you, what, do you, what do you say to her about this body of work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'd say first and foremost, it's just emotionally striking, right? Um, you're sort of greeted with this intense gaze 
um, and sometimes no gaze because their eyes are closed or they're being diverted into a different angle or perspective. Um, but the one thing that I think is working really well is the decision to keep them or to turn them into black and white uh, versus having them in color. So I'm just sort of imagining, you know, if these were colorful images, I'd be a lot more focused on the clothing, um, you know, what type of hair they have and, you know, all these different aspects of the self um, in terms of how they are represented. But the black and white really pushes me into a space in which I'm more focused on the form of the person, the texture of the skin, uh, the way the, the skin sort of bunches up as the mouth is open. Um, so I think just the process and thinking about how that relates to the concept and how we're reading into these individuals um, is really important. Um, and, and, and it's working really well. Ellen, Ellen Friedlander, what are, your, uh, what are your first thoughts for McKenna? Well, I love I love the project. Um, I I think it's amazing. I'd like to go to number twelve, Jeff. Yes, sure, I love that one. Yeah, this photograph right here. Um, I feel him. I I mean, we he whatever it is he's feeling, I'm trying to feel. I want to feel it. So I think this, this particular photograph is. Um, amongst the strongest of the work. Um, it makes me want you to, I want to know what each individual is, what wants us to hear about what they're, what they're angry about. It'd be really interesting to do something with each individual. And maybe they're all angry about different things. Maybe it's, you find out they're all angry about the same thing, but whatever it is, I think it'd be really interesting, especially this guy, um, what, what's really under his skin because it i i don't think i want to put words in his mouth as i guess i'm saying mm -hmm. um in this case what do you think granville yeah i'm right there with you um and i'm so glad ellen that you pointed this image out because this was one that i wanted to, to tap into uh i also think it's one of the strongest and there's a way there's a way in which I sort of find myself in that space that he's occupying, um, even though it's more of a mental emotional space for me. Um, but it's just, there's something about like the movement and um, what's the word? Just sort of the ghostly artifacts that's, that's situated here that makes, makes me think of a, a release beyond the body as well. Um, you know, whether that's pertaining specifically to the emotion, the stress, the pain, the anxiety, um, but also sort of like a release of the spirit to disconnect from the mind, body and spirit situation. Um, so I really like those images. I think this is one of the strongest, but the ones that really have that movement in there um, really, really evoke a new sense of being like I so, think number eight. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We both said at the same time. I mean, <laughs> you 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 feel her vibration, you feel her energy. Yeah. The next one, go to the next one and go back and forth. You can see the difference. She's this is a lot more static. The number nine, static, still feel her, but number eight, you're in it, you know, yeah. and that and that in it. Um, is undeniable for the audience. I mean, it, it you you it forces us to stay with the image. I guess is what what it does. Mm -hmm. Well, so I guess I have a question, McKenna, about so what is the so we have this piece. Um, is this the final product, or so or are these? Yeah. How does this how does this present? So that is the final product. Um, I went in with the intention of making this and the images being kind of secondary. And then afterwards, I was like, oh, I actually really enjoy these images. So this is a alcohol transfer, um, which is just a pretty simple process, which is also why I made them black and white, just because that's easier. So I'm glad that that worked out. Um, but basically you just print on Mylar paper, stick in isopropyl alcohol, and you're able to transfer it to basically any material. Um, 
So I kind of wanted to make it, I don't know, overlap people and just play with it. And then this is the outcome of that. Mm. Well, this piece, I mean, is incredibly riveting. Um, I love the process. I think the process is super interesting. Um, again, I almost, it's hard to tell because it's on a screen. I think if we saw it in person, it would be, have a whole different life to it. How big is it, McKenna? Um, I think it's four or five feet, feet by three feet. So it's relative, it's bigger. Yeah. So it definitely has impact when you see it because it's bigger. Yeah. Kind of swallows you whole. Yeah, I, I would be interested to see the individual photographs um, like this as well. Maybe even imparting a word or phrase, sentence of some sort. Uh, that gives a little bit more context in terms of the emotion that the person feels. Because uh, the other thing that I find interesting about the individual photographs, even though you have used the same sort of device, you know, like the screaming device, uh, there's a way in which each person still has their own unique emotional quality to them. So some of these feel more haunting, some of these feel a little bit more sad, some feel like they're kind of singing, or maybe they're surprised. Um, so I think using that same alcohol transfer, using text over the image as well could also elevate the project um, so that it's in line with that final result, uh, but also provide a little bit more context in that sense as well. But yeah, I really, really enjoyed thinking beyond a static one image and how you're sort of compiling them together as well. Had you thought about doing that, McKenna? Um, not with this project, but with a different project. So I think it would be interesting to combine that and maybe talk to my friends and somehow add that because it wouldn't be necessarily hard to just play around with that and see how it turns out. Mm -hmm. So I found these these images all to be very compelling. And I think you said, McKenna, that these are friends of yours, right? Are these students with you and on campus? Yeah, they are. Yeah. So I mean, one of the things, so for me, I'm I'm now, I think we can call me officially old. Um, you know, and when I see things like this, um, I I'm looking, I'm looking to try to see a like a broad spectrum because there's 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 anger at, at all ages, you know. I, I'm angry about the way the world has been the last few years. And so I, I, I always, um, I don't know, at this particular time in my life, I sort of look to see the, the anger that's not just of the young folk. Because <laughs> I know that there's a lot out there, but it's, 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 uh, it would be interesting to see that across a, a broader spectrum of, uh, of ages and demographics, for me anyway. Great point. Yeah. Had you thought about that, McKenna? Had you thought about taking this project and making it a little less age specific? Yeah, that was going to be one of my questions as I want to expand the project. I was kind of limited with the demographic and time wise, and I want to do more with this project. And so I think that would be really cool to get a wider range of people, whatever that may be, however I may do that. Um, I think that would be really interesting. Yeah, because when you get into different ages and you get now people who are rich and poor from different areas of the country and the world, and um, yeah, it's just the, the different views and faces that you'd see, I think would really be fascinating. Not that these aren't, I mean, they're just real, they're all very compelling. I suppose what we're, we're actually saying to you is you have a project that could carry you the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> you know, take this screaming thing seriously, which would be remarkable if you think about it. If you're into photography, it's something you're on this long journey of, this is a project that you could take from now until the last day of, on earth. And it would be one of those projects to look back on and go screaming because it releases so much. It's a, it's a, it's an emotional um, release of all happiness, sadness, just like Granville said. And you take that through the stages of your life, mm -hmm. and the people in your life. That's that's adds another complexity and layer to it. 
Yeah, there's something just incredibly cathartic about finding a place where you can just scream and just let yourself go. I mean, there's the the, the emotional yeah. release that comes with that, and that happens across all ages. And um, you know, McKenna, I think you you really hit a hit a nerve when you talked about. I mean, people are angry right now for a lot of in a lot of different ways, and and all all over the spectrum. Um, <laughs> it's you can get a lot of really good material here. <laughs> Yeah. I guess another question I had was whether I should stick with more movement or if some of the static images help contrast them or because I was doing both mostly the static ones so I could uh, print them easier but yeah that was my question. Well Granville kind of said it and I'm going to agree with him I'm going to go back to image number 12 I think mm -hmm. it is and say that this is just um, that that it's not static, that you feel that emotion, that you've got the movement of the camera, that you feel his face is kind of distorted adds so much. It doesn't always have to be this distorted. It could be more distorted, it could be less, but, but I think it definitely adds versus subtracts versus some of the more like static ones. Yeah, <clears throat> I think the movement really drives the idea of, you know, sort of the anger that you're getting at in terms of the state of the world and the politics and everything. Um, you know, I think Ellen had said it as well. It's just, it feels so vibrational. Um, so there's just a way that we're able to access that emotion um, and we actually feel it, you know, and I think that's the one thing with photography that can be kind of difficult sometimes is, how do you convey an emotion beyond a screen, beyond a piece of paper? Um, it's using some of these kind of basic devices, I'll say, in terms of like movement, you know, shutter, shake, uh, things of that sort. Um, but sometimes those really basic um, devices can can do something really powerful for the image to allow it to convey and to push past the boundaries of the frame itself. Um, so with that said, you know, I don't think that every single photograph has to have the movement. Um, you know, you can add to the add a rhythm and flow using some static, some movement, something in between. Um, but definitely I say, I would say to keep experimenting um, with how movement is changing the way that your viewership is reacting and also connecting to the images. There's something cinematic about the images where there's motion, you know, it's almost like you're watching the earth shake in some way. Yeah. And, and, and you kind of you kind of get that in the images that have that motion. But I think there are there. I mean, I, I agree, there's some really powerful still images as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm also kind of curious, McKenna, if you've ever thought about maybe abstracting these a little bit more as well, uh, in terms of showing how emotions are expressed through the body through like body language or like you know veins bulging or sweat or, you know different aspects of that have you thought about that before no the only thing i was doing was just kind of making their faces a little fish-eyed with um lightroom but that mm -hmm. would be really interesting to try to bring out because i really yeah. think that this is anger it doesn't yeah, always so. have to be anger though it you know so it could it you know so think about a wide range of emotions because um you can scream for happiness and joy which we don't want to forget you know we 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 we're really kind of we have a lot of anger but we really want to balance that with a lot of joy so um that can be just as powerful that's a good yeah. point that we didn't think about it really is. And I think that would come through. I mean, the, the, a scream of anger is very different from a scream of sadness and desperation or a scream of joy. You get, you would get a different face from the same person who experiences that differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love that you said that because I was thinking the same thing. I wrote down some notes and that was my exact thing. Have you thought about capturing other emotions? Um, because I feel like you're kind of already doing this and it happens intuitively or organically because, you know, each person expresses things differently. Uh, so I think it's already starting to go that route just because of the people itself. But 
Um, I think it would be really awesome to see that wide range of emotions, how that's shown through the face, how that's shown through the body. Um, and like Ellen said earlier, you know, this can be a lifelong project to just continue to explore. Um, there's a photographer, John Copland, who, um, you know, he photographed his body aging. So, you know, kind of to Jeff's point as well, photographing different demographics. Um, you know, you get this really beautiful range of skin and the wrinkles and the tones and the different marks that show life um, or new life, you know, things like that. So I don't know, I'm kind of rambling, but uh, there's, a, there's a lot of great potential. On how so amazing forward. potential, yeah. So McKenna, is this, do you think that this is something that will continue? Is this a project you see growth to, or um, what, are you, what are you thinking here? Yeah, I definitely wanted to continue this project post both graduation and outside of this class. I really enjoy taking pictures of strangers. And so I think that could be an interesting, I don't know, way to broaden this. And with everything everyone said, I also think it would be really cool to keep it throughout the life, my life and see which of these people stay in my life, if I can incorporate that. Um, yeah. Very if cool. you do go out on the street and you do photograph people you don't know, make sure that you take really good notes and you get you get that thought process that they were in at that time. So that if you, let's say you go back, something happens, you get to photograph them again 10 years later. That's also a really interesting you know, information to have that you have the before and you have the after and maybe you have the journey through and you just never know where, where things are going. Well, this is great. It's a good conversation. We've been, uh, we've been talking here with McKenna Davis, who is a, a senior at uh, University of California in Santa Cruz, and she is studying her uh, art with a focus on uh, photography. Um, she's also a biology student. And our reviewers today have been Granville Carroll, who is now with the Arizona State University, and the, uh, the illustrious Ellen Friedlander, who has been with us on many occasions. She's based out of Los Angeles as a, as a photographer. Um, as we uh, wrap things up, I'm going to uh, share a couple of videos that might be of, of, of interest to you. Um, Granville has a video out on YouTube, Wish You Were Here, Granville Carroll, Carroll Beyond the Veil, a talk about his photographic works, which uh, I think you should take a look at. And then Ellen Friedlander, uh, The Year of Not Knowing, an artist talk with Ellen Friedlander. I want to thank you all for joining us. Uh, Ellen, Granville, and McKenna, good talk, um, and thank you all for joining the Crit House.